It must have seemed like the end of the world. Millions thought it was a punishment from God, or a sign of humanity's failings. Anger and despair spread across Europe, with riots and the masses everywhere scrambling and clawing for what little they could find to eat. In farmers' fields, where once wheat and vegetables grew, emaciated figures dug at the barren dirt for whatever rotten scraps they could find. Some of the farmers may have looked to the sky with hope, because it seemed that the snow was finally stopping, and warmer weather would soon arrive. It was a false hope, because to those that would survive, 1816 would forever be known as the year without a summer, and it would have a calamitous effect across the planet. The real cause of the disaster wouldn't be discovered for over 150 years. Welcome to History Snob. 1816 started out with an unusually cold winter, but hope springs eternal, literally. Farmers could always look forward to spring, but as the months went by, people began to worry, then panic. Spring just didn't seem to come. In a world where many people relied on local produce to survive, crop failure meant starvation, malnutrition, and death from disease. In the spring of 1816, the world was facing a meteorological crisis unseen in recorded history. While some places fared well, others, like Europe, bore the brunt of this global disruption. And it was a disruption on every scale. The average temperature dropped by 3 degrees Celsius or 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit. For reference, during the last glacial maximum, average temperatures were about 11 degrees Fahrenheit lower than today. So the summer of 1816 was something like a half an ice age. Crops, shipping, livestock, and human life in general were now in danger, and no one knew why. The consequences were devastating. France was especially vulnerable, having seen multiple reformations, wars, revolutions, and reigns of terror. The country had just begun to swing back to a sense of stability. However, the summerless 1816 would rack the country with famine. Crops began to fail. Prior to 1816, farmers could easily yield enough to feed their families, as well as nearby cities. However, by June of 1816, the winter was still ongoing. Nothing would grow. Most agriculture of the time needed at least 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit to thrive. However, the temperatures failed to reach those levels for most of the year. Spring crops failed to bloom, and many summer crops were never planted. Hunger had caused a revolution in France before, and another one was now on the horizon. King Louis XVIII had been restored to the throne, the same one his ancestor Louis XVI had left vacant when he was beheaded in the bloody rebellion of decades prior. However, the widespread famine now threatened his reign too. He'd come to power after the final defeat and exile of Napoleon. Now with the emperor having failed at Waterloo, the new old King Louis was dealing with a starving populace. Over the next few years, this anger and turmoil would cause France to adopt more liberal governments, eventually once again changing the nation's political structure. It's strange to think that a 5 degree drop in temperature can cause governments to fall, but it can. And if the people living at the time had known the true cause of it all, they would have been astonished. The unusually cold weather did have some benefits, however. They were just much further north. Because of the swell of cold weather across Europe, warmer currents ended up pushing towards the Arctic. This caused a vast melting of the ice shelf and the opening of a brand new pathway through the frozen continent. The British Royal Navy took notice and planned on using the thaw to find a path through the Northwest Passage. Whaling ships had reported back to the Navy that the ice sheet between Greenland and Spitsbergen had melted away, seemingly opening up a new pathway into and through the Arctic. It seems some people thought the melting was permanent. This would lead to disaster. Both David Bucknan and John Ross set out on separate expeditions in 1818 to exploit the thaw. Both expeditions were planning on a shorter voyage than they had actually experienced. Finding the ice having returned to normal, the ships ended up frozen in place for two weeks. While Bucknan eventually returned to Newfoundland, 
and left behind any ideas of Arctic exploration, others in his charge returned. The second ship, H.M. Brig, was captained by John Franklin, a lifelong Navy man and experienced explorer. Franklin would sail north again years later, only to meet with unspeakable disaster. His ships, the Erebus and the Terror, became two of the most famous wrecks of all time. Both ships attempted to find passage through the frozen waste. However, both ended up stuck in the ice for literal years. Franklin refused to abandon his quest and died on his frozen vessel. His surviving crew abandoned the Erebus and the Terror and headed out into the frozen Arctic. None were ever seen again. Many more expeditions followed, eventually succeeding in opening up the Arctic for scientific outposts and other ports of trade. This was one of the positive legacies of 1816, but most consequences would be horrifying. Between 1816 and 1819, malnutrition led to an outbreak of typhus that spread from Ireland to affect other parts of Europe. It claimed the lives of at least 65,000 people. In Hungary, people reported murky brown snowfall out of season. In Italy, a snow the color of rust or blood fell through the year. In Switzerland, an ice dam formed an artificial mountain lake. When the temperatures rose and it melted two years later, 40 people died in the flood. But the year without a summer also helped inspire one of the most influential works of literature and the birth of science fiction. In 1816, the gloomy cloudy sky and lack of sunlight might have been a nightmare for crops, but it was heaven for moody literary types. In 1816, poet Percy Shelley decided to take his then girlfriend on a trip to the estate of his friend Lord Byron in the Swiss Alps. Finding the weather equally inhospitable, the small group of friends hunkered down by the fire in the Lord's massive villa. There, on a dark and snowy night, they began to read ghost stories to each other, each taking turns from the French book Phantasmagoriana. That's when Lord Byron proposed a challenge, that each of them will write their own ghost story. Mary Godwin, Percy's girlfriend, became flustered as she couldn't think of what to write. Each morning when she woke up, she would be asked if she had thought of anything, and she would have to reply no. Finally, one morning, a bolt of electric inspiration hit her, and she finally had an answer. Perhaps a corpse would be reanimated. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Percy Shelley's trip had given his future wife, Mary Shelley, the inspiration for her seminal work, Frankenstein. The novel would eventually be published two years later in 1818. Mary Shelley was only 18 at the time, but the year without a summer helped inspire her to write her masterpiece. On the North American side, the still young United States was also experiencing change and hardship. North American crops were failing, with nearly two-thirds withering in the fields. Former President Thomas Jefferson had retired to his state in Monticello. His fields in Virginia were quickly diminishing, and even he was forced to take a loan to survive that year. This ended up exacerbating his already deep financial troubles, causing the once very wealthy man to see his wealth shrink in size dramatically. By the time of his death in 1826, the former president had over $100,000 in unpaid debt. His heirs would receive very little, and his dynasty would end before it began. Outside of Jefferson, the rest of North America also saw change and struggle due to the strange weather. In the eastern United States, a persistent and dry fog was seen by many. This fog would dim out the sunlight in huge sections and was unaffected by wind changes or rainfall. Snowfall also spread out in unusual patterns. As late as June, many East Coast states reported multiple days of heavy snow. This sudden drop in temperature killed off many crops, causing financial hardship for many in the region. In Canada, many had to turn to alternate sources of food due to a sudden shortage in milk, bread, and other essentials. It was like the world had been turned upside down, with Sarah Snell Bryant of Cummington, Massachusetts, penning in her diary the simple phrase, weather backward. Asia also fared very poorly. In one of China's larger provinces, the rice crops failed en masse, with many farmers facing starvation and destitution. However, while rice was becoming an untenable crop, there was one plant that would grow well in the colder weather. It was the hardy poppy flower. Many farmers made the switch to growing poppies, which had little use as a food. The flower did have one key and very lucrative use though, and that was in the production of opium. Naturally, this caused China to be flooded with the addictive and deadly narcotic, which found its way into countless dens 
and exported to various countries. The more it spread, the more people got addicted and the more money was made. This industry was especially lucrative for the vast British Empire and its economic powerhouse, the East India Company. While the British interests were all too happy to facilitate the production and export of opium from China, the Chinese government grew angry at the destruction caused by the narcotic. They took action in prohibiting opium across the nation. Naturally, this angered the British, and the two countries would find themselves in conflict. The opium wars were devastating and resulted in death and destruction on a mass scale. Eventually, the English would come out victorious imposing what would be known as a century of humiliation on the Asian nation. China was forced to legalize the drug, as well as allow free export of it from several Chinese ports. This war even led to Britain gaining full sovereign control over Hong Kong. This control was only relinquished in 1997. Eventually, the world returned to normal and the year without a summer faded into memory, but the damage had been done. Over 100,000 people lost their lives to both starvation as well as a surge in disease brought on by the stagnant cool earth. People at the time speculated about what really happened and why, with many invoking God's wrath or other religious connections. However, the actual cause of the endless winter was far more dramatic and far more powerful than anyone could imagine. Modern science only solved the riddle in the 1970s. What would become a nightmare of famine, cold, revolution, death, and despair started with a bang. The sudden eruption of the massive Indonesian volcano, Mount Tambora, occurred on July 15, 1815. It was so massive that even to this day, it is considered the single largest volcanic eruption in recorded history. Vomiting into the air a staggering 24 cubic miles of dust, rock, earth, and other gases, this cloud would blot out the sun and choke the sky. For those nearby the volcano, it was an apocalyptic event in itself. First was the sheer force of the blast, which was felt and even heard up to 33,000 kilometers or 2,000 miles away. Closer to the mountain, sudden tsunamis and ejected pyroclastic material spread outward in a radius of 300 miles. An estimated 10,000 islanders lost their lives, killed almost instantly by the immediate effects of the explosion. To this day, you can see the scars of this explosion in the massive crater that now sits atop Tambora. The volcanic plume spread around the Earth, carried by the jet stream. It reflected sunlight, causing the world's temperature to dip leading to 1816 being remembered as the year without a summer. That's all for today. Have you heard of the year without a summer? Are you surprised how a volcanic eruption changed world history? Do you know any other ways things were affected? Leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe to History Snob. Thanks for watching.